Hello, it's me. I'm wearing a mask. I've got dangly things. But it's still me. I'm losing my hair. But I've still got some of it. <sighs> it's only me. <laughs> so, here is me at the end of my treatment over here in Moscow. I have had an absolutely wonderful time. As I've told many people, the clinic is amazing. The staff are amazing. The, uh, they're so caring. Um, they are so efficient. They're, it's so clean. It's, the machinery is fantastic. I couldn't be in better hands. So happy days there. Uh, I have lost most of my hair on my head. My sides are at best very patchy at worst not really there eyebrows seem to be holding on tenuously um i would get up and give you a jig at the moment uh, a bit of a dance because i'm quite happy helen's coming today she's come to pick me up she's uh, left the airport for uh, left home in hillhead at four o'clock this morning so she'll be here today i might meet her in my man nappies and give her a dance because i'm still wearing man nappies because let's face it <laughs> All cool people wear man nappies, uh, but I, I won't put you through that because you know you, you, you've 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 been through enough, I'm sure. Um, I thought I would show you my stats because uh, there are at least two people who work at Bednam who understand m maths, um, and the rest of you struggle. So I thought this could be a, a really good uh, learning opportunity for for you budding mathematicians. Um, if, if not, you could just stare at these numbers in, in abject boredom. Um, and uh, sorry about that. So, let's have a look at these numbers. I'll try not to turn off the camera like I did last time. So, let's have a look at the numbers. What do we have here? What do we have? Well, you might have seen this if you've seen my videos before. You will have seen these. My numbers are split into three important categories. Blood, haemoglobin, leukocytes, my immunity levels, platelets, stuff that hang around my blood that get broken at great Greek weddings. Um, haemoglobin needs to stay above 80, as you can see, 97s and 100s, 97s and 95s, 96 and 112 there. So my blood levels have been fabulous. They've been really good. Uh, platelets need to be stay above 20, so 78, 61, 45, 35, 26, 26, 29. That's when they said to me, uh, don't do any exercise because that can lower your platelets. I said to them, really? Okay, I think I might just say stacked, <laughs> sat down at my table making pointless videos. Uh, I was very happy with that. And my platelets responded with that positive attitude to, to raising themselves up to really acceptable levels. Now, the important ones are these leukocytes. This is my immune system. This is what they want to kill off before they, before they put stem cells back in. And I'll explain the, the situation again in a second for you. So they started off, they need to be below basically 0.5. They went down to 0 0.2, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. So this was where they were really low and, and the chemotherapy had done its job. And then after that, they started injecting me to try and get my immune system back up, which is then is now back up 6.18 and 10.2. So they're dead happy with those results. So my results were pretty stellar to the point that on day 10 of isolation, they let me out. Uh, and yesterday I was allowed out sort of wearing my own clothes and, and just being careful and wearing, wearing a mask uh, and, and, and stuff like that. So that, that was all pretty cool. Um, happy with that. I, I've even turned that into um, an Excel spreadsheet because, um, because I can uh, and I have time on my hands. <coughs> so 
just a really quick reminder of, of the whole process of HSCT. So what HSCT does, so I got here, it's a 30-day process. I got here three days, they pre-tested me. That's to make sure that I was healthy enough to actually go through the process rather than have some kind of heart condition and die in the middle. And they go, oh, that's not very good. So I was, I was, in, in, I was given a really clean bill of health. So after that, they then give you uh, a day off to go and do a bit of sightseeing. That was nice. And then uh, chemotherapy, uh, no, stem cell sim stimulation. So that's where they stimulate your stem cells with some drugs, infusions, to make sure that your bones are producing enough stem cells that they can then harvest. Because they need enough stem cells to harvest to put back into you. To, to then reboot you. Then they give you four days of chemotherapy to kill off the T cells and B cells and all these horrible cells that are the ones that are attacking your own body. Uh, and once, once they're happy that they've done that to a good enough standard, then they re-inject the stem cells back into your, into your jugular here. Uh, that was the most difficult part because I had a really easy stem cell stimulation period whereby my bones didn't hurt at all. It took three days for them to get them because my bones were obviously just going, yeah, we've got some stem cells. Yeah, you stimulate them. Here's a couple, here's a couple, here's a couple. So they, they, they got stem cells, but it means that they then had three whole bags to put back in. Rather, some people have one bag, two bags. They had three, and actually it's quite a lot of pressure on your chest because they inject and it feels like a sort of elephant, not quite an elephant, on, on your chest, and it's quite uncomfortable. But that went that that was fine. Then you get a day off and your stem cell birthday, because that's a really big thing for a lot of people, especially for people who have had this for sort of 20, 30 years, who have been living with MS for, for differing amounts of disabilities and cognitive and physical disabilities. For them to have been sort of reborn and 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 to to have to have halted this thing in, in hope. Um, that's a massive thing. So, so, so normally we get a big cake and celebrate and everyone has a lovely time and there's a ritual of spilling the night, liquid nitrogen that the stem cells come up in because they're frozen on the floor as a kind of like, yeah, and everyone does that. And, it, and it's a really beautiful moment. And the staff here are so caring. Um, it, it's fantastic. And then you go into isolation for 10 days where you just stare at the same four walls. And if you're like me, you do a lot of writing and video blogging and, uh, and make yourself busy and actually rather enjoy it. And it's this weird, weird almost Stockholm syndrome where you're, where you're stuck in the same place, but you're so safe and you're, you're risk free. And I think that's part of it. You're, you're taken care of completely. And, and when you leave isolation, there's, there's that kind of risk of unknown. You've got to get on airplanes, you've got to go home, you've got to deal with risk of infection on your own and, and, and without doctors and nurses around you the whole time. And I think that, that, that that's the that's scary part. Being here isn't the scary part. Being here, you, you just feel really safe because you're, you're, you're surrounded by competent you know, professionals the whole time. Um, I have done a lot of videos to help people who are on the HSCT trail, which had, have been immensely well received. I get personal messages and, and um, they go on, there are loads of HSCT forums. You won't see any of them really. Occasionally I might post them on my Facebook, but generally they go on the HSCT forums and, 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 and people, just because a lot of people, they, they sign up for something like this, but they don't have any visual idea. They don't have any representation of what goes on, of what things look like, of what procedures take place. And actually, they're really, really good here, allowing you to video everything. I've videoed <laughs> bloom and everything, things sticking in here and there and whatever. Um, I didn't video my catheter going, my urinary catheter. That, that, that would have been just a bit weird. Um, so yeah, it, you know, there are, there are very few side effects as far as I'm concerned, but this is so variable. Other people have had, I know Frank Next Door's had 
platelet transfusions because he didn't have enough platelets. Other people have had far more pain at different periods. I've had nothing, maybe the odd sort of, um, I can't even show you, I don't know where the camera is there. You know, you know, you, my blood thins in places and you get sort of, sort of bruising and, and whatnot, whatever. Um, food has been fine been quite European food. I get this weird thing every morning of two baked apples and a piece of meat. It's just a, such a weird, it's a second breakfast. And it's literally like a piece of steak or tongue or something and then two baked apples. And you think, what a weird thing to eat. But actually it's really tasty, it's just what you want. Um, so food has been fine. I've supplemented that with food I bought myself. Um, you get a fridge, uh, a microwave, Wi-Fi. I mean, you know, I'm busy. I'm busy, and I, I, I'm going to be really well treated. And I just wanted to say that, fingers crossed, my stats are looking good. I'm on my way home tomorrow. Helen will come and pick, um, say hello to me today, uh, and then she'll go back to the Hotel Vega nearby, and I'll get myself packed up, and then and then tomorrow we'll be off home where I will be recuperating. The recuperation period is a real unknown. And obviously this is something I'm going to need to speak to senior management about because there's just no predictability. I mean, some people say it can take you a year, you go down and it takes you a year to get back up to where you were before you started your treatment. But then that can be applying for people who have had, who are in like wheelchairs and had this disability for a long time and who are older and who are, who, whose EDSS score, whose disability scores are much worse, who might have greater cognitive um, issues. For me, I've hit this early and I've hit this early purposefully. I've hit this early purposefully for this reason, because I want my, you know, trajectory to be far more, you know, far quicker and 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 to be in a much better place to make a much quicker um, recovery so that's why I kind of rushed this through and in fact Frank next door only got diagnosed in January and he was out here in March so for some people this is like because this is the only game in town really drugs whatever this is the only game in town so to hit it as early and as hard as possible is the absolute most important thing to do. So I, that's why I've done that. But I just can't predict my recovery. Uh, and so that's that's going to be an ongoing conversation with how I feel. But to be fair, I feel pretty good at the moment. I'm shaky on my legs as hell because I haven't used them, I think mainly. It might be partly to do with drugs, but mainly because I've been pottering around like a couple of square meters for, for, for the best part of the month. So I do have wheelchair access to the uh, to the airplane and then off the airplane, um, just out of pure laziness, probably. Uh, no, I think I, I'll need that. But um, but I just thought I'd give you an update and say thank you for your support and love and. And generosity over over the over the months, and uh, and I shall hopefully see you soon, though not too soon, because um, most of you are germ-ridden, you know, horrible children hanging hanging around us, picking up all sorts of nasty bugs. I mean, to be honest, I'm thinking about getting rid of my own children. You know, they play football on 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 Saturdays and rugby on Sundays, and quite frankly, they can do one. Um, so if anyone wants a pair of twins, they're going free. Uh, no, in all seriousness, it'd be lovely to see or hear from you. Uh, take it easy. I hope this update was of use. Uh, I am baldish, but I'm going balder. Um, some still hanging on, but every time I rub that hair, it comes out. So, uh, uh, don't hit me on the head with a big spoon, I might crack. Uh, speak to you soon. Big love from Moscow, just.